This is your Barbados Today Morning News update for Tuesday, June 18th, 2019. Thanks for joining us. I'm Carol Williams. Many surviving victims of gun violence are refusing to identify the attackers to police. This, in addition to the unwillingness of other witnesses to come forward, is posing a major headache for law enforcement. Commissioner of Police Tyrone Griffith says it's affecting the ability to solve some cases. Sorry, in 2015 and 2016, the clear rate was in excess of 80%. We've noticed the trend where witnesses are, are, are no longer coming forward in the way that they used to. Um, so th there's not that supporting evidence that we get. So that, that has impacted in a negative way the, the, the clear rate. And so there is no better way than for persons witnessing crimes, victims of crimes coming forward and giving evidence. We've also recognized that people who have been shot and know the perpetrators are, are not cooperating with, with law enforcement. That makes it much more difficult. Very, very often. The police commissioner says a number of the 30 murders recorded for the year was execution type and he labeled St. Philip where seven homicides occurred as a problem parish. Meantime, a government minister believes Barbados has reached a tipping point with gun violence. In making a declaration, Minister in the Ministry of Economic Affairs and Investment, Marsha Cattle, yesterday underscored the need for medium and long-term measures to combat the problem. She was addressing the 19th Annual Career and Life Management CAM program. Countries get to these tipping points when they fail to invest in young people in the ways that they value. And I'm not going to go into the short-term responses. That is a discussion from another person on another day. But I will say that we have to look at some of the long-term responses and medium-term responses that are in our control. And it means that we have to get very flexible about how we provide opportunities Minister of Education Santia Bradshaw is back on the job full-time and happy with her health progress. Since announcing her breast cancer diagnosis last August, the minister has been receiving treatment overseas. She says she learned many lessons in her journey and remains dedicated to her constituency. Minister Bradshaw provides an update on her health. I've completed chemotherapy, completed um, surgery to remove the lump and also um, radiation. The, this last course was proton therapy, which is a form of radiation. It's less invasive and um, the results usually um, are a lot better in terms of proton as opposed to normal radiation. Uh, it was an intensive seven week program. Um, every morning I had to be at the hospital um, for about 10 minutes basically on their machine. Um, the prognosis has been good. They were able to remove the lump back in February when I did the surgery. And over the next few months, while I will have to return to Miami, um, it, for the most part, the, the major um, part of the treatment has actually com been completed. But I will still have to return for some infusions, but also to be able to um, do some checkups with the doctors from time to time. But I'm anxious to be back at work and um, happy to be here. I'm glad, thankful for the support that Barbadians from across the political divide have given to me. Postal workers won't be getting any travel allowance anytime soon. Minister of Home Affairs Edmund Hinkson says while he empathizes with the plight in light of rising gas prices, it isn't possible to grant such allowances at this time. Speaking to the workers after touring several offices across the island yesterday, he said government has attempted to ease public servants by granting them a 5% increase in salary and lowering the income tax rate. We're still trying to get out of economic doldrums. So we can now give you allowances for, you know, the gas and things. We would love to, but, you, you know, I mean, if a country was the third most indebted country in the world a year ago, it got a whole strain. If not, the dollar that would have had to devalue. And I have not come across any Barbadian yet who put up their hand when I asked if they wanted the dollar devalued. Not once. So this is, these are the sacrifices we have to make. 
Minister Hingston also announced that Cabinet last week approved postal office delivery regulations, which will see residents having to collect some deliveries themselves in some instances. Included in those regulations will effectively be that if it is a hazard for a postman, postwoman to deliver mail, that he ain't delivering the mail, that the person will be informed they could come and get the mail at the post office and they would have to pay a fee for that too. There's regional and international news after this short break. In the Bahamas, the Financial Services and Immigration Minister is on the defensive over criticisms that he owns shares in a company that was recently awarded a $20 million government contract to redevelop the country's main international airport. We get more from Eyewitness News. Minister of Financial Services, Trade, Industry and Immigration, Brent Simonet, refuting claims today that he's a shareholder in the Bahamas Hot Mix Company. The company was recently awarded a $20 million contract to carry out rehabilitation work on the Linden Pinling International Airport's runway and taxiway. The Nassau Airport Development Company issued a release on the issuance of the contract this weekend, which brought about widespread backlash, as Simonet's name was seemingly tied to the deal. Simonet, however, sought to set the record straight. Are you a shareholder? No. Where, where is this confusion coming from with you? your name? Uh, it, because my name is Brent Simonet. I'm, I'm guilty of everything. You know, Black Belt News got hog day. You know, it's, I'm the favorite whipping boy from, from ever, for, 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 so let it be. Nad noted that BHM was the most successful of the six companies that bidded for the project. Four were reportedly international companies and two were Bahamian firms. However, public reaction proved not to be concerned with the company's success as much as they were concerned about who the shareholders were. In a document obtained by Eyewitness News, eight members were listed to have involvement in the company, one of them being the Simonet Group Limited and another being the trustees of Brent Simonet's Children's Trust. Internationally, almost half of India is facing drought-like conditions while a blistering heat wave has killed dozens of people in an impoverished eastern state. One western state has witnessed its worst drought in 47 years, forcing many to leave their lands and take shelter in relief camps as they await the monsoon rains. Al Jazeera has the details. Muddy water. We have no arrangements for water. We keep getting it from whatever source is available. My daughter fell in well when she went to fetch water. A passerby rescued her when he heard her scream. Asha collects five parts of water, that's about 100 litres a day, for herself and her four children. The government sends water tankers, but Asha says they come only every four or five days. Elsewhere in Bead, farmers have left their land and moved to nearby relief camps where the government provides fodder and water to keep their cattle alive. There is no water left in the Bead area. It used to rain by the 7th of June, but there are still no signs of rains. Last year we had a drought situation. This year is worse. If it doesn't rain again this year, we have to leave our village. Navnat Kadam has already spent four months at this camp. This is the worst drought in Maharashtra in 47 years, and that's as the country suffers its lowest rainfall before a monsoon season in more than six decades. And that's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbadastoday.pb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. And sign up for breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media in bus terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 
99.3 FM. I'm Carol Williams. Have a good day.